we don't stop it, we're gonna get buried. They hang, they all hang together. Time is running out. I need help. On Dallas, then. I just want to give you one night. One special night. Falcon Crest, one step closer to the edge. Friday. Dad, you have to get up here quick. You all right? No, we're fine. But a friend of ours isn't. Next, on the Equalizer. Hey, hey! He's tried to buy up the whole neighborhood, but I wouldn't be able. Nobody has been able to prove it. Excuse me, Mr. Thorne. Excuse me! You're trying to muscle Harry out of his store. What do you mean? Us hiring cheap thugs to do your dirty work. Come on! Yeah! I'm Bill Curtis, an American baseball player nobody wanted is taking Japan by storm. And if he keeps it up, he could become the Babe Ruth of the Far East. That's just one of the stories ahead on Channel 2 News at 10. Then in one half hour, stay tuned for Atterley on CBS Late Night. Saturday on CBS. Yesterday's outlaws, today's heroes. It's old-fashioned justice to the rescue. Yes! History! For sure. Outlaws. Then, one woman's determined to reveal a town's awful secret. You don't know what you're doing. One man will do anything to stop her. We're talking murder here. One person's already been killed in this thing. Now, there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide from certain death. Come on. Get out of here. Barbara Mandrell, Tom Wolfat, and Eddie Albert star in Burning Rage Saturday. Americans, we know who we are. And when it comes to news, we know who we trust. Dan Rather, weeknights on the CBS Evening News. This is CBS. Coming up next, Gary Hart's wife tells what she thinks about reports her husband is cheating. Also tonight, new evidence on how liquor affects the chance of getting breast cancer. Also on our news tonight, an historic uh, vote for an all-male club to welcome, welcome women. And it looks like a computer game, but it's actually a high-tech way of fighting a war with the Soviet Union. We'll have a special report next on the 10 o'clock news. It's Derby Days at Kentucky Fried Chicken with over $600,000 in cash and prizes and a new horse racing game. You can win anything from free soft drinks to meals to cold cash. And they're off! It's Derby Days at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Post time, 11 a.m. Racing all day. Say you're John McCarty. John. We need an answer now. With a fast decision to make. And your people are in three different cities. Just use your touchtone phone on? to talk with all of them yeah, at the same time. Are we going to junk the format? Who's he talking to? It's called AT&T Alliance Teleconferencing Service. From equipment to networking, from computers to communications. I want it. Done. AT&T comes through. Set up your own conference call. 0700-456-1000. Americans Caribbean. This year, we give you even more. More gentle breezes. More colorful shores. More of everything. With service to nine islands and packages from $395 to $690. American Airlines, something special to the Caribbean. WBBM Television, sharing the spirit of Chicago. From Chicago's news team, this is Channel 2, the 10 o'clock news. Lee Hart emerges from seclusion and responds to charges that her husband was unfaithful. I know Gary better than anyone else. And when Gary says nothing happened, nothing happened. Good evening. For three days, she has remained silent, away from her husband, away from the media. But tonight, Gary Hart's wife says she stands behind her husband, despite allegations that he spent the night with another woman. And to prove her loyalty, she headed straight for New Hampshire to be by his side. 
Before leaving to join her husband on the campaign trail, Mrs. Hart told reporters she trusts him. She believes that Hart did not sleep with Donna Rice, a 29-year-old actress from Miami. I love my husband very much. The one thing I do know, especially about my husband, is that he does not lie. Mrs. Hart was bitter at the way the press has reported the story. I don't think one should misconstrue, um, uh, if I may say so, something that might be a bad political judgment with the kind of character assassination that has been going on. As for Donna Rice, she was out of reach, reportedly staying with her parents in South Carolina. Her name, now an issue in a presidential campaign and in a marriage. Believe me, if my intent was to have a relationship with a woman, particularly a very attractive one, uh, I certainly wouldn't have gone about it this way. In all honesty, if it doesn't bother me, I don't think it ought to bother anyone else. The Hearts will go home to Denver on Thursday nights. We'll have more on the Gary Hart story a bit later in Walter's Perspective. On then to Washington, D.C., where the dramatic story today was in testimony of the Iran-Contra hearings. Testimony linking officials at the White House to an alleged cover-up. Mike Flannery reports on that. Uh, the waiver Richard Secord says a key presidential advisor Robert altered Klein an important document, rewriting it to give the false impression that Ronald Reagan knew nothing about a shipment of U.S. weapons to Iran. I said to Colonel North, there's something wrong here. This is uh, expletive deleted. And I said, well, it's not, uh, you know, not my understanding of the facts. They said, well, that uh, McFarland had drafted it himself, uh, meaning that McFarland was the principal he should know. And I said, fine, thank you very much. I'll get out of you guys' hair, see you later. And I left. But Secor did have another meeting with North Lieutenant Colonel Oliver out. North after the alleged cover-up had failed. At that meeting, North got a phone call from Vice President George Bush and from Ronald Reagan himself. I said, let me have the phone. But it was too late, he hung up. I, I wasn't fast enough. I wanted to tell the president that I'd like to see him and try to bring some rationality back into this, uh, into this matter. Uh, there's, no, there's, no, there's no reason to back away from these operations. I mean, uh, maybe there were uh, uh, mistaken judgments taken in the policy. Maybe not. I happen to think that it was a, a good policy and was worth the uh, worth a try. Here at the White House tonight, the president's spokesmen are denying Secord's charges, and they're looking forward to the fireworks when Secord gets a tough cross-examination tomorrow. Mike Flannery, Channel 2 News, Washington. One of the men who played a major role in the Iran affair has died. He is William Casey, formerly the director of the CIA. He had undergone brain surgery late last year. He was 74 years old. Women and alcohol can be a deadly combination, according to two new studies on breast cancer. Their findings suggest that alcohol consumption is responsible for 10 to 15 percent of all breast cancer cases. These studies are published in tomorrow's New England Journal of Medicine. They conclude that moderate amounts of alcohol increase a woman's chance of breast cancer and that just one drink a day could raise that risk by 50 percent. Doctors add, however, that alcohol is just one of many factors that can affect the chance of getting breast cancer. There is a history-making vote to report tonight here in Chicago. It's a vote to welcome women where they have not been welcomed before. Phil Ponce reports. Tonight, this woman made history. She is believed to be the first woman in the world legally admitted to Rotary International. It's quite an honor to be a member of this club, male or female, and it's exciting to have been the first woman member of the club. Tonight's move follows Monday's Supreme Court decision that Rotary International cannot stop local clubs from admitting women. Only one member of the Pan American Rotary Club objected. I will go along with what this club votes for, but I am one member who would like to see the Chicago Pan American remain as an all-male unit. In the end, the vote was 20 to 1 to accept three women members. Our main reason was because uh, the Rotary is very highly um, esteemed within the business community. But also, I'm very happy to try to become a member of a, such a humanitarian organization. The only other women ever admitted were the ones who prompted the Supreme Court lawsuit. Their membership was not considered valid at the time by the international office. 
all new members, of course, must meet the basic requirements of being either a business owner, an executive, or a professional. But members say in 1987, no shortage of potential female applicants is expected. Phil Ponce, Channel 2 News. Nationwide, the Rotary has about 400,000 members. In Illinois, there are 285 Rotary chapters. Big Started club. here, <laughs> sure is. Still ahead tonight, reports of sexual abuse of children at a preschool in the suburbs. And later, the most sophisticated battlefield ever created for practicing war. Cocoa Bath Collection at Lord & Taylor. Coco in the air. Don't look now, but your Chicagoland Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers are really letting it rip. With deals like $500 cash back on the Chevy Cavalier. Already priced over $900 less than Ford Tempo. So when we're done tearing up the town, we'll let Ford pick up the pieces. Attention every appliance, TV and stereo fan, buff, enthusiast, devotee, aficionado, maven and admirer. For three days only, the things you want most are on sale at Highland. Appliances, stereos, TVs and more. For three days only, this Emerson VHS video recorder with wireless remote is just $217. And this Sony Auto Reverse Car Stereo with free normal installation is just $118. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are the only days to save. And Highland is the place. Police in Palos Hills are saying tonight they may have a suspect in connection with alleged sex abuse at a daycare facility. The Mother Goose Preschool is the focus of the investigation. Authorities report that the name of a female employee has been mentioned several by several of the youngsters they've interviewed. Police add that the owner of the school is cooperating fully in the investigation. In Chicago tonight, the search is on for a man who police believe is responsible for attacks on elderly women in the Gold Coast area. The latest attack occurred this morning when a 77-year-old woman was assaulted in her building's entryway, then forced into her apartment and raped. It was the third attack in a week. The other two occurred in a building on Oak Street. In local politics, it's a done deal, as they say. The Chicago City Council has approved a $31 million bailout plan for the CHA. CHA says it will use the money to pay contractors and suppliers and to breathe new life into the Scattered Sites program. The combination grant and loan package is not without strings. The CHA must report quarterly now to the City Council on how it spends the money. A construction site on the near north side on the, uh, has claimed its second victim in recent months. A construction worker fell several stories to his death today. That's the site of the future Bloomingdale's department store. Investigators say that safety cables, which may have prevented the accident, were removed earlier by other workers on the floor. On the national front, drug agents have arrested 40 major drug figures in what they call the biggest cocaine bust in American history. The arrests were made in New York, Miami, and Los Angeles, breaking up drug operations that could be responsible for close to a billion dollars a year in drug traffic. Reports tonight from the Pentagon that the Soviet Union has developed new armor for its tanks that gives them a lot more protection against enemy missiles. It's another example of how the superpowers are preparing for a war that everyone wants to avoid. A war of the future that will rely on computers as much as soldiers. Mary Nissenson reports from an army practice mission in the Mojave Desert. You are flying through a controlled airspace over the Army's National Training Center, 1,000 square miles of some of the toughest terrain in America. But don't be fooled by the primitive landscape. The territory you're entering into is just this side of science fiction. This is war played in peacetime, high-tech and fully computerized. You might call it the ultimate laser tag. Every weapon emits a signal that mimics its real range and firepower. Laser receivers on soldiers and vehicles discriminate between hits, kills, and misses. 
The Army uses the laser weapons plus simulated chemical warfare made from colored smoke and tear gas and air support from the U.S. Air Force to create a realistic but bloodless battlefield. It gives the soldier who's training here a luxury impossible in live fire combat. He can make a fatal mistake and learn from it. It is, I guess, quite a shock to a young soldier for the first time to realize that he is being removed from the battle not because of some sterile decision by an evaluator or an umpire or someone who is detached from the battle, but he's being removed from that because someone who was opposing him, another soldier, and in this case it's another American soldier, he is the one that took the first soldier out of the battle because he was better. And that's a rather sobering experience. Yesterday, some troops brought to train here from Fort Knox, Kentucky, were unable to prevent an invasion by a special mock Soviet regiment that's based year-round in the desert. See, there he's blinking. Okay, he's firing. Okay, there's a the near miss. Okay. While the trainees were on the battlefield, computers tracked their movements and analyzed their weaknesses. It is a crucial part of the training process. We can record the whole battle, show them exactly what happened, why it happened, so that it won't happen again. You can do war an instant replay. Yes, we can. All right, let's go. Today, armed with that computer analysis, the trainees are ready for a rematch. The mission for the U.S. task force is to make it through this area called the Whale Gap, right to the crest behind us. But last night, their reconnaissance men were killed here, and what they don't know is that the Soviets are ready and waiting for them. This time, the trainees are faster and more flexible. Moving deftly through landmines and tank traps, they accomplish their objective ahead of schedule. Uh, I've learned more out here in seven days than I have learned probably in the past year. As far as experience, it's really fantastic. Uh, training opportunity that we couldn't get any way other than at the cost of lots of lives. Friday, the secret behind the success story here, an attitude you never expected from the Army. To us, winning can be uh, not whether we're defeated or not, just how well did we do it. You really have to think about that for a moment. That is the Army saying, it's okay to make mistakes. All we want you to do is learn from them. And the troops do learn in that supportive environment. In fact, despite the dirt and the heat and the rattlesnakes, these guys actually enjoy themselves out there. We'll show you why Friday on our 6 o'clock newscast. Bill and Walter. I guess the rattlesnakes would be the most dangerous <laughs> thing yes. in the battlefield. Or a newspaper now. Wait a minute. Look ahead coming up at why one Chicago newspaper, a big one, ought to practice what it preaches. And in sports, Johnny with the story of a man who could become the next Babe Ruth of Japan. You know, I've based my entire life on something this man said to me 30 years ago. Son, he said, I've invented the Dove Bar. In business today, there's only one way to react to financial needs. Immediately. Boulevard Bank. Fast response is how we're earning your business every day. If you have twenty to thirty thousand dollars to spend, you can have the car ranked eighth in America for customer satisfaction. Or the one ranked sixth. Or second. But right now, if you want the car ranked first, you'll have to pay a lot less. The Honda Accord. At your Honda dealer. Buy a Honda and keep the change. Imagine picking up the newspaper to find out that your husband is marrying another woman. Next on Donnie. Tomorrow at 3.30 on Channel 2. Bermuda is you, and Delta gets you there with care, giving you special low prices on green vacations. So fly Delta to Bermuda. Not everyone was meant to know her song, but it's the place where you belong. Bermuda is you. Call 1-800-BERMUDA. For reservations, call your travel agent or Delta. It's a little scary being a little guy who's going into the hospital for the very first time. Good thing this is a Blue Cross PPO hospital. Your neck, how you doing? Because you know the doctor won't be a stranger. How you doing today, huh? Bad, huh? And because it'll cost less than it might somewhere else. What's his name? Eleanor. Eleanor. Is your first time in the hospital? The PPO plan from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. 
More care at better rates. Do you have Blue Cross? I understand from Harry, we have four or five days coming up that must be a payoff for our being good all year long. I wonder what the reason was, Phil, but that could be <laughs> it. But it is, it is delightful out there tonight, and looks like it's going to stay that way. A few clouds, but they'll dissipate soon. Let's go to the temperatures now. And we have a beautiful day as I was out to Calumet Park today at 130th and Throop. 64 at O'Hare. Lakefront was 57, Midway 65. And we had a high today of 76 and a low of 40. Much of the country, except in the west was like that. You'll see how hot it was out there in a minute. Humidity 50 when southwest 5. Pressure has been steady now for several hours at 30.02. Tonight, some clouds coming down the lake, but the main clouds are in the southeast where heavy rains flooded downtown Greenwood, Mississippi, and storms from Texas over into Alabama tonight. These are clouds with no moisture in them, as far as we can tell, not big enough to drop. If they were big enough, they'd show up on radar. They're not there. These are the thunderstorms that show bright colors over into Alabama now. Rain up in New England, that's finally tapering off. The West is hoping for a little rain because the heat was excessive out there today with 108 at Bly, then record 104 up in Sacramento, Redding, and Fresno, and even 100 way up into Grant Pass, Oregon, Grants Pass. High pressure tomorrow afternoon will dominate here with pleasant conditions. A breeze off the lake will make it a little cooler there tomorrow afternoon. A 45 low tonight is near normal with northwest winds diminishing, becoming light northeast tomorrow with sunny skies and a high of 72, but only upper 50s near the shore for Friday, partly sunny, a little cooler, high 68. And on the weekend, as Bill mentioned, and still beautiful Saturday, Sunday, Monday in the 70s with sunshine. We've done something right, Bill. Oh, I think so. The story we've been reporting all week about Gary Hart is raising questions tonight, not only about Hart, but about the media as well, which is the subject of Walter's perspective. What Gary Hart did or did not do in his townhouse is not as important anymore as how the story about it is being told in the media. Here it is now, three days after the story broke, and it is still being told all over the country in the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, in the Sun Times, the Tribune, and the Southtown Economist, on front pages, back pages, and the editorial pages, where the opinions of the publishers are. Is the Gary Hart story a good one, or is it not? The Sun Times in Chicago says the Hart story is flawed. It is not a good story because it has not enough facts about Gary Hart's townhouse. The reporters did not watch the back of that house, so they did not know for certain when the woman was there. And that specifically, says the Sun-Times, is how the Hart story is flawed. The story should have been airtight before it was printed, which is very good advice about reporting on politics. If you have a story that could hurt a candidate, you must have it airtight. Words of wisdom from the Chicago Sun-Times, which recently, you may recall, reported on a candidate for mayor of Chicago, Heinz charges Verdoliak met with a mob boss somewhere in the Ambassador Hotel on the Gold Coast. There were no reporters at all, in front or back, no evidence whatsoever. And Verdoliak denied it, publicly and specifically denied every bit of it. But the Sun-Times told the story again without any evidence. Verdoliak placed at two meetings with mob chief, a story about as airtight as Swiss cheese. The Chicago Sun-Times, still waiting for the evidence on Gary Hart, like we're still waiting for the evidence on Edward Oliak. I just finished four years of school, and I have four years worth of debts to prove it. I figured a new car was out of the question, until my Ford dealer told me about a program with pre-approved credit for college graduates. No money down, great financing, even an additional $400 cash rebate to help me out, with nine different cars and trucks to choose from. If you're a recent college grad, your local Ford dealer has just the program you need. Why not stop in today? Quality people, quality products. A smart move, and I'm taking all the credit. One word distinguishes the American Express card from the others. Member. And membership has its privileges. We lost our card, our cash. Even our passport. You've come to the right place. I can help you. Good. That's great. That was an easy sale. No need to wrap it. I think I can fix it, honey. That's why I got buyer's assurance. I left my prescription medicine at home. Don't worry. Global Assist can help. To apply for membership, look for this display and take one.
The new Mitre Sizer Muffler, $29.95. What do the White Sox do? They did absolutely nothing, nothing Walter. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Nothing tonight while losing to the Yankees. It was 4-1 to one New York. As Rick Roden shut Chicago down on two hits, Floyd Bannister was the loser. He, he gave up three runs in the third, and that's all Roden needed. This Don Mattingly single scored Ricky Henderson for one of the runs before 13,000 fans. It was a real boring game for Chicago fans. Gary Ward followed with a single. This drove in another run. The Yankees led 4-0 after three innings and won it by a final of 4-1. The Sox only marker came on a sacrifice fly. The Yankees even won the defensive battle. Former Sox Wayne Tolleson with a great play at short to key a double play, 4-1. Yankees. In other games, Milwaukee lost to the Angels again. It was Detroit over Seattle, Boston 6, Oakland 2. Baltimore shut out Minnesota, Kansas City 6, Toronto 3, Texas 7-2 over the Indians. The Cubs have just begun a long road trip out in San Francisco. So far, it's tied 1-1 in the third inning. The Cubs did score first. They hit the board as Jody Davis smacked his sixth homer of the season, but Candy Maldonado homered off Scott Sanderson to tie the game, and right now in the third, it is knotted at 1-1. In other National League games, the Mets edged Cincinnati 3-2, Houston the same over Philadelphia, and Montreal beat Atlanta by a score of 6-2. And speaking of the Braves, their former slugger Bob Horner, who defected to Japan, has become an instant hero over there. You've got to see this. After hitting a homer last night in his Japanese debut, Horner followed tonight with three more home runs. This is the first one. Horner signed for about $1 million a year with the Yakult Swallows. There were 52,000 fans at Jenga Stadium for the game. Now, here comes Homer number two, also to left field, as Horner is teeing off on those little Japanese pitchers. And finally, here comes the third one, this time to center field. Former Atlanta slugger Bob Horner has a Japanese trademark four homers in his first six at bats in a Japanese uniform the fans are already calling him the blonde Kong and I think with all the interviews he's going to have to learn how to speak Japanese don't you <laughs> in hockey Montreal beat Philadelphia 5-2 tonight in the NBA the Celtics outlasted Milwaukee again this time 126 124 Danny Ainge was super he hit for 30 points and several three-point shots to make up a nine-point deficit for Boston in the first half. The Celtics took charge in the second half behind Larry Bird shooting a great move for the Birdman for two of his 30 points. But then Milwaukee rallied within two, trailing 122-120 with just a few seconds left. Paul Pressey was hammered on his drive, but no foul was called. That was it. It's very tough to win at Boston Garden, 126-124 Celtics. Meanwhile, the Northwestern's women lacrosse team was knocked out of the NCAA tournament this afternoon at Dyke Stadium. The Wildcats lost to New Hampshire by a score of 11-9. But Northwestern 10-3 going in played very well. Kate Olehowski helped the Wildcats to an early 3-1 lead. She tallied four goals for the afternoon. But watch New Hampshire's Karen Geromino. She comes out and surprises Northwestern with a sneaky backhand shot. New Hampshire scored five straight goals to lead 6-3 at the half. The Wildcats closed to 6-4 when Maureen Mullins weaved in and scored a goal. They played the across with the running clock, 12 flares aside, and no out of bounds. Here's Pauline Collins nailing a rebound, and the Easterners were ahead for good. The final 11-9. Northwestern is ousted, but Coach Kathy Timshaw says it's not all that bad because the program is on the upswing. We've been very successful. You know, I think it's a tribute to our, our school that we get the nationwide exposure because we travel and play the best teams in the country. Is there any lacrosse in uh, Big Ten here? <laughs> no, there isn't. There are several Big Ten schools that do compete at the club level, but we're the only varsity level program in the Big Ten. Kathy Timshaw with uh, Emory Moorhead out there as Northwestern's lacrosse team was beaten. But Bob Horner is tough, isn't he? he is he <laughs> tough? We're going to follow him. Here's something else we've been following. Day 46 now in the voyage of the garbage without a home. Six states, two countries have rejected the garbage, and now even the flies are keeping their distance. 3,000 tons of garbage from New York is being towed around on a barge near Florida. Federal officials say the barge is remarkably free of common flies. The officials say they understand why people want to steer clear of the trash, but they can't figure out why the flies are staying away as well. You'd think it'd be paradise, wouldn't you? We'd think so. We want to stay on that. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Good day. a pizza. Oh, yeah? First, I make the bottom. Then, on top, mozzarella cheese. How much? 40 pounds. Okay, 20. Then what? Lots of meat. What kind? 
You know, pizza meat. Pizza's ready. It's a small town homegrown, made the way you make your own pizza. Two stone. I didn't think you could do it. Two stone. Take a new look at freshness from your old friend, Jewel. What do you get when you join National's Emerald Club? C-29, silver Chevy Beretta. You get special privileges, like upgrades. E 15 blue Cadillac DeVille. You get special rewards, like convertibles for the summer. F-31, red Pontiac Sunbird. You can even earn trips to faraway places. G-12, white DC-10 to Honolulu. If you think you're worth more than clean ashtrays, join the club. Channel 2's The 10 O'Clock News, judged best by the Associated Press, is a presentation of WBBM Television. It's the Subaru Value Celebration, the greatest Subaru.